falls are the leading cause of death in the workplace. Fatal fall accidents account for about 30% of workplace fatalities. In construction, falls cause about 40% of worker deaths. About one quarter of fatal fall accidents are from falls that occur on the same working level. The frequency of fatal falls has been rising steadily. In the most recent census of fatal occupational injuries, fatal falls reached an all-time high of 887. About a quarter million workers each year are injured from falls. It is the responsibility of the employer to identify fall hazards. Eliminate fall hazards. If the fall hazard cannot be eliminated, the employer must provide equipment, training, and procedures to protect employees from falls. The objectives of this course are to understand the regulatory requirements for fall protection. Understand the basics of fall protection. Understand the types of fall protection systems. Understand the methods for selecting, inspecting, using, and storing personal fall protection equipment. Select a harness that fits and is designed for the fall protection system in use. Hold by the back D-ring with chest strap facing forward and untangle straps. Pull on the shoulder straps. Insert one arm, and then the other. Pull a leg strap between the legs, tighten, and fasten. Repeat with the other leg strap. Fasten, tighten, and adjust the chest strap. Start the 5-point harness fit test. 1. The chest strap is centered on the chest. The shoulder straps cannot be pulled over the shoulders. 2. It is difficult, but not impossible, to slide your fingers under the leg straps. 3. The sub-pelvic strap is firmly under the buttocks. 4. When flipped up, the dorsal D-ring is below the bottom of the neck. 5. The overall fit of the harness is snug, with no twists, or loose components. Locating Instructor, Instructor Located, Jeremy Norton, Education, Graduate, U.S. Navy Nuclear Power School, OSHA 10 and 30 Hour Instructor, Certified Safety Specialist, University of Washington, Masters in Business Administration, Portland State University, Associates in Applied Science, Bachelors in Science, Business, Experience, Training Petty Officer, USS Carl Vinson Reactor Department, U.S. Navy Nuclear Mechanic, Training Manager, Synetics Solutions, Technical Trainer, Vestas Wind Power, North American Training Manager, Iberdrola Renewables, Founder and President, Affordable Safety Training LLC, Arrest systems need to be inspected prior to each use. A periodic inspection by a competent person is also required. Now ANSI recommends these periodic inspections be done at least annually, but check your equipment owner's manual because their requirements are often more frequent. The best place to get inspection requirements is from the owner's manual for the equipment that you are using. You can also often find it on the tag or label. Whenever I showed up to a site, I'd head straight to the Connex and start going through the fall protection equipment and I would just yank anything out of there that I didn't like. I uh, ended up with a great collection of terrible fall protection equipment for that. We're going to use some of those examples to go through some sample inspections. So let's walk through a fall protection harness inspection. The first thing to look for in a fall protection harness is does it have a label? Now this is true across the board with all safety equipment. If it doesn't have a label or if that label is not readable, you can't use it. Doesn't matter how good a condition the actual equipment is in, you have to have that label and it must be legible. Now in this case, the label is pretty dirty, it's pretty worn, but it's there and it's readable. So let's check out the webbing on the harness. Uh, so the first thing you want to do is grab the webbing about six to eight inches apart and kind of bend it. Now bending it will allow you to see the damage easier, but it'll also get you a feel for the actual structure of the, of the webbing. And any brittleness that occurred from like sunlight exposure or chemical exposure will show up as you bend it and you'll really get a good feel for it. So bend it and pass the straps, all of the straps, all the way through your hands as you take a look at it. You want to look for cuts, nicks, 
any type of discoloration, um, broken stitching, damaged webbing, all sorts of um, damage that could potentially happen. You can see here there's a, a cut in the side and a nick. There's some abrasion right here that's damaged the webbing. Um, there's all sorts of stuff in here. This kind of looks a little bit like cigarette burns from the ash. Um, yeah, there's lots of damage in here. Now, chemical damage will often show up as uh, stains or dark spots on the webbing. You can actually see that a lot right here. Um, you can actually smell damage too. The smell, it kind of, you get kind of an earthy sort of kind of rotten smell that you can tell that it's been damaged. Um, sunlight will bleach the harness, um, bleach it white or take the color away and also make it kind of brittle. Um, yeah, just from looking at the webbing of this harness out here, I really am not liking what I'm seeing. There's some serious discoloration, there's some damage, there's some cuts, nicks, all sorts of brittleness. Um, so based on this webbing alone, this harness is dead to me. You can see why I pulled it out of service. So now let's inspect the hardware. Now the hardware, basically the metal components and anything that connects the metal components to the harness. So when you're dealing with metal, the first thing you wanna check for is rust. Now you old graybeards out there, don't give me any lectures about protective oxide coatings. Uh, it's not protective, it's just rust. And if you see rust, you gotta get it out. Um, and in this example, there's tons of rust right here inside the D-rings, buckles are all rusted, um, some very, very heavily rusted. You, I mean, if you find rust, that's it, you gotta get it out of service. Now check the hardware to make sure that it can move freely. We're going to check the D-ring, check the buckles here. Now if you're using tongue buckles, you want to make sure that the tongue buckles, that the straps can move through the tongue buckle freely and that the grommets aren't out of round or damaged in any way. So take a look at all the hardware components and just make sure they're in good condition and that there's no distortions on any of the components. So the last thing you want to check on a harness is to see if that has been involved in a fall. Now, most harnesses have some sort of impact indicators on there. A lot of them you'll find in the actual webbing. Um, here's an example. You can see that this uh, part of the webbing has been folded over onto itself, has been stitched closed. So if this part has been torn open, you can tell that this harness has been involved in a fall. Another one that's really common is on the back of the back D-ring, this plastic uh, slotting here. Up here, this will be, get distorted or just break off altogether. And that's the sign that the equipment has been in a fall. And also just checking the actual hardware components themselves. If the back D-ring is stretched or out of round or any of the buckles have been bent or pulled out of shape, that's another example of a harness being impact loaded. If there's any sign at all that your harness has been involved in a fall, you have to remove it from